what to expect at Mardi Gras, here's a lowdown on my experience. From the beads to the food to the Southern culture, there's so much to know, do, and understand about this unique place. Mardi Gras is celebrated for a whole month and ends on Fat Tuesday, which is the biggest celebration day of Mardi Gras. Fat Tuesday changes every year, but it's usually sometime in February or March. The purpose of Mardi Gras is to celebrate in gluttony and eating rich, fatty foods before you have to give something up for Lent, which is the day after on Ash Wednesday. And while it started as a religious holiday, it's morphed into a large party. Mardi Gras in the United States is celebrated throughout New Orleans. However, the biggest celebration takes place in the French Quarter on Bourbon Street. And Bourbon Street is filled with restaurants, shops, and a ton of bars. During Mardi Gras, thousands of people roam the French Quarter. You will also likely see some boobs, so that might not be the best place for your kids. And you may be asked to show some boobs in exchange for beads, but don't feel obligated to do that. Now, people throw beads from the balcony, but these balconies are reserved for people who rent or own the home and you might get lucky and be invited to one. I was lucky enough to be invited to one and experience the throwing side of the beads. And it was so fun. But people who throw down the beads, they have to provide the beads that they throw. And speaking of beads, you don't need to buy your own beads because you'll get plenty of them from people throwing them down at you. So let's talk about parades. Parades can be in or around New Orleans. What's interesting to note is that these parades are put on by a crew which are various organizations and societies, and each crew has a unique history and culture. The parade schedule and routes can be found at MardiGrasNewOrleans.com. Now the parades that go through the French Quarter are generally walking parades, which consists of marching clubs. But parades that happen outside of the French Quarter usually consist of 15 to 40 elaborately decorated floats. People on the floats are in costumes and are actually required to wear a mask. They are usually throwing out beads at the crowd, so make sure you're paying attention or you might get hit by one. Trust me, it hurts. Oh. Now let's get to the good stuff. The French Quarter in New Orleans is one of the few areas in the United States where open alcohol containers are permitted on the streets, but they must be in plastic containers. And did you know that drinking is permitted at 18 years of age as long as they're accompanied by a guardian or spouse 21 or over? Now bars in New Orleans close between 12 and 4 a.m., but they can actually stay open 24-7. So there's plenty of partying to go around. And be sure to get a frozen alcoholic slushy beverage, such as a hurricane, margarita, or daiquiri. There's so many flavors, so you're gonna wanna try at least a few. They even have drive-through daiquiri stands, but you're just not allowed to open the container while you're in the car, and of course, no drinking and driving. Now when it comes to accommodations, it can be very expensive, especially in the French Quarter. So the best thing to do is book your accommodations at least six months in advance with free cancellation policies. Then keep an eye out for better deals as it gets closer. When it comes to safety, New Orleans can be a dangerous place, but if you just use common sense, you'll be fine. So don't flash your valuables, be aware of your surroundings, and stay in the tourist areas. And people are generally very friendly, and locals have that southern hospitality thing going on. When it comes to dress code, dress however you want. A lot of people just wear green, purple, and gold, or they dress in elaborate costumes of all kinds. And just so you know, purple equals justice, green equals faith, and gold means power. When it comes to transportation, the best thing to do is just walk. Take an Uber or a Lyft to get to the French Quarter. The French Quarter has limited parking, and the streets are blocked off to cars. Now with everyone walking around, eating and drinking, and the humidity in the air, it actually smells kind of bad. And by the end of each night, the beads are all over the floor, so just be careful not to slip on any of them. So it can be a little cold, it can be a little warm, so just pay attention to the weather forecast. And it's also a little humid and there may be a chance of rain. Food is plentiful in New Orleans, but it's mostly southern food. Of course you're going to want to try the beignets, such as at the famous Café du Monde, but I personally like the beignets at Café Beignet. There's also king cake, which is very specific to Mardi Gras. Other traditional New Orleans food are bread pudding, gumbo, etouffee, crawfish, oysters, jambalaya, po'boys, catfish, alligator, turtle soup, okra, muffaletta, red beans and rice, and just a ton of fried and fatty foods. Now a trip to New Orleans doesn't have to be all about Mardi Gras. There are so many other things you can do there. You can take a ghost tour, you can visit a plantation, there's a ton of shopping and lots of artwork. You can visit a voodoo lady, listen to jazz music, do a swamp tour, or take a riverboat. Phew, did you get all that? Mardi Gras is one heck of a celebration. It was a bucket list item and one that I will never forget. I loved catching the beads, seeing everyone's costume, and listening to all the wonderful jazz music. 
There's just so much to take in and do in this unique city. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and give us a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Instagram at CuriousJigs.